friends. Hello. Hi. How are you today? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello. So today's video. Um, so I feel like I haven't done a video like this in a long time where a person has made me so actively angry is not the right word, but just like confused, <laughs> like just utterly confused by this person. It's been a while. So today's video, we are going to be talking about Shallon Lester. I'm sure that you guys have seen a lot of other videos on this person. I know there's been a few creators. Um, how I found out about her was a subscriber of mine DM'd me and was basically like, you have to look into this person. Um, it's really insane. The things that are going on with her, the things that she's doing. Um, she's basically like being the rewired soul but nobody's calling her on it and so I googled her name and a video from D'Angelo I believe it's D'Angelo Wallace which I am gonna link that video down below because honestly his video is one of my favorite commentary videos I have ever watched period not even just like on this topic in particular I thought his video was so incredibly well done well researched he very clearly felt very passionately about what he was talking about and I think he lays everything out and lays out examples of kind of what this person is is doing very well. So after you watch this video, I would highly recommend going to check out D'Angelo's video. I thought he did a fantastic job. I, I really loved his video. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> but I watched his video and I was like, okay, <laughs> this is nutty. Um, so I went to Shallon's YouTube channel and I was like, who is this person? Because I see that she has a video titles that are like Justin Bieber and Haley Baldwin pregnant signs a guy isn't ready to commit. Is Selena stalking the weekend in Bella Hadid? Why the coronavirus will ruin Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's marriage. How to spot a psychopath. The truth about Ellen DeGeneres. So it's titles like that. And I'm looking at these and I'm like, okay, who is this person? What are her like credentials to be telling somebody if Ellen DeGeneres is a psychopath? By the way, no credentials allow you to deem someone a psychopath based on videos you've seen on them on the internet. But that's besides the point. Um, so I looked her up. I found her LinkedIn. She has no psychology degree of any kind no sort of collegiate education in any of this and she self-proclaims that she just does a lot of research and a lot of reading and psychology is very interesting to her which is like okay she has co-written two young adult novels uh she was a reality star for six episodes of an mtv show in 2010 and she's worked for a slew of like gossipy magazines like star magazine was one of them kind of the magazines that are like <laughs> they tend to find themselves in a lot of lawsuits for slander so i was like okay this is making a little bit more sense but then i actually started watching her videos and after after watching a bunch of her videos to kind of make this video and form an opinion because I think the biggest thing people always say when exposed videos <laughs> or like videos talking about people start coming those people's fans always are like well they don't actually know who you are they don't watch your videos they don't know you like they don't get you they just pulled a select couple of clips um, so I watched a lot of her videos <laughs> to prepare for this and watched a ton of her content and the determination that I have come to is that Shailen is definitely a mix of, it's like if the rewired soul and John Cuckian, if they had like a little YouTube baby, that's who it would be. So Shailen seriously started uploading to YouTube eight years ago. And one of her very first videos, I, I looked back to see like when she started uploading, cause I was like, has she always posted this type of content? Has there been a shift in the content she's posting? Um, and her, one of her very first real YouTube videos was titled why boys are attracted to sluts. So that right off the bat to me was like, okay, so these videos have been of a similar mindset for a very long time. Initially her videos though didn't really center around like celebrity drama. They really just centered around her giving advice. Like she would give advice to people. We're going to get into the advice thing in a second because she's now charging people for that advice, which I don't know. So it seems like she wasn't really focusing on psychology that much. She wasn't really focused on like celebrity stuff as much there was some sprinkled in but it wasn't a lot it was really just her like talking about her own life and giving advice based on her own life which I have always said this about people who talk about mental health and things like that I think using examples from your own life and providing that type of context and experience that you have from your life and using yourself as an example of things is completely 100% totally amazing I love when people talk about mental health from their perspective and are able 
able to use themselves as examples to show something when it comes to mental health. I think it helps break down stigmas and I think it's an amazing thing. And there are a lot of mental health YouTubers who maybe don't have a psychology degree, but they have experience and they share that experience about themselves. <laughs> That's the key thing here. So she was doing that for a long time, just like giving advice. It seems like about a year and a half ago, she switched to this sort of weird hybrid of celebrity gossip not youtuber gossip mostly she really just talks about celebrities and also mixing in like psychology <laughs> and psychological principles into her videos along with like all of this advice that she gives a lot of the videos i'm going to be talking about today are in regards to her kind of attitude towards selena gomez only because i think that is the best example of how she lets her personal bias get in the way of what she's saying and how she ends up saying really cruel and hurtful things about people because of her own biases but if you watch any of her videos which I have watched a lot, you will find at least four or five incredibly harmful statements that she says sprinkled into these like 40 minute videos. So the first video we're going to talk about is Selena Gomez boyfriend reaction is Selena stalking the weekend in Bella Hadid. So in this video she basically is talking about Selena Gomez. Uh, she uses the word pathetic to describe her at one point because she says that she's stalking the weekend because she mentioned the weekend, uh, Selena and the weekend used to date, she mentioned the weekend in like a couple of Instagram stories stories about music and movies that she liked. So now she's a stalker. She makes jokes about addiction throughout the entire video, which is one of the biggest things I have a problem with with her. The way she talks about mental health is disgusting, but the way she talks about addiction is even worse. The underlying tone of this entire video is her making sweeping generalizations about not only Selena Gomez's mental health and struggle with addiction, just sweeping generalizations about mental health and addiction as concepts, um, which any person who knows anything about psychology or helping people or any of that would know that nothing is that generalized, especially when it comes to things like mental health and addiction, because they're so individual. The, the study of mental health and the study of addiction and people who go through that, that is such an individualized process. Like, yes, there are concepts and theories that we can apply to different things. And like, yes, there are things that are a little bit overarching, but no person is the same. And that's why I really struggle with people who talk about other people's mental health and speculate and make generalizations about that because they make those generalizations based off things they read on psychologytoday.com which is what I'm pretty sure she's doing. She makes these generalizations based on what she read on the internet and then applies it to every single person she sees who might possibly have that. And one of the biggest things that I really struggled with with this video was she was talking about how Selena's fans enable her addiction and how and first of all we don't even know the state status of Selena Gomez's addiction. I'm not even 100% sure that she actively has announced that she struggles with chemical dependency. I'm not even sure, like, I don't really know the history with that, I guess. But to speculate on that when it's really not super common knowledge, I feel, is pretty gross. She's never done some, like, tell-all interview where she's talked about abusing drugs and alcohol that I'm aware of. And the thing that made me really upset about this was Selena Gomez obviously has a lot of fans, and probably the majority of her fans are, like, younger kids or girls in their early 20s or whatever. What Shallon does is encourage Selena fans to go <laughs> and basically call her out for abusing drugs and call her out for drinking when she, that's, I don't even want to get into the fact that she is shitting on this girl for having an organ transplant because I can't even get into the depth of that. Hating on Selena fans for un enabling her to continue her drug use, enabling her to uh, like do all of these things and defending her when she's very obviously drunk at the AMAs. It couldn't possibly be a panic attack. She obviously was so incredibly wasted. She does something very similar to what the Rewired Soul did with Bobby Burns, where she's like, come on guys, it's so obvious that they were actually drunk in this situation. Like, you're just a denial. You're just a blind stan if you don't think that they were wasted. As if the night of the AMAs, she conducted a breathalyzer test on Selena Gomez and can be 1000% certain of her blood alcohol level. Like, what? So she almost encourages the fans of Selena Gomez to call out Selena and be don't enable 
her and do all of these things. And the worst thing that she says in this video, she talks about the fact that because these fans are enabling her, Selena is going to die. She literally says she's not going to make it past 27 because all of her fans enable her. So she is telling these people, <laughs> most of them who, especially the stands of Selena are probably younger kids, most of them, she is literally telling them that if their idol dies, if this, if Selena Gomez happens to overdose or something horrible happens to her or an organ fails, which she has lupus. So like, <laughs> okay, she's literally telling the fans that it is going to be their fault, basically, if the Selena Gomez dies. All of this is based on the assumption, first of all, that Selena Gomez is like actively dealing with addiction. That's like the first assumption that you have to make that could be completely not true. But on top of that, even if she was, and even if she did overdose, and even if she did die, it's not her fans' responsibility to make sure that she is in recovery and doing well in recovery. Her fans are not her AA sponsor. You know what the worst thing would probably be for somebody who is recovering from addiction? Which again, we don't know if Selena Gomez is. Shallon says it with such confidence that everyone in the comments is speculating on it. I would argue probably one of the worst things in the world for somebody who actually is sober and is in recovery and isn't drinking, I would argue one of the worst things in the world that could possibly be for them during that time would be for all of their fans to be like, it's so obvious you're still drinking. It's so obvious you weren't actually having a panic attack. You were just wasted. That would probably be really shitty if you were actually in recovery, actually trying, going through the process of detoxing and being sober. It would probably be a horrible feeling for your fans to be attacking you thinking that you're still doing this because some woman on the internet has made the assumption that you are. There's also a video, again, about Selena Gomez. She hates Selena Gomez. She really, really, really strongly dislikes Taylor Swift and Selena Gomez. But recently, Selena Gomez announced on a live stream with Miley Cyrus that she uh, has bipolar disorder. And that's, she realized she has bipolar. It was like trending on Twitter. Everybody was really proud of her for coming forward with, you know, this diagnosis and being so open about it because anytime a person who has a larger platform or anytime a person in general, even if you have like two followers, anytime you're able to openly discuss your mental health, it truly does help with the destigmatization of mental health. Mental health used to be, even 10 years ago, used to be so stigmatized. It was so like taboo to be going to therapy or to need to go to a mental hospital to receive treatment. So for Selena Gomez to say, I went to a mental hospital, this is what they diagnosed me with, is huge. It's a really amazing thing to see somebody with such a huge platform talking so openly about mental health. Shallon, for some reason, saw this as a bad thing. Shallon does speculate in the video if she thinks Selena Gomez actually has bipolar disorder. Um, I guess somewhere along the way, Shallon was her private therapist, was able to psychoanalyze her. Oh, wait, no, she wasn't. She doesn't know her. <laughs> and the best thing about this video, okay, so she's talking about if she thinks Selena Gomez has bipolar or if she doesn't. And she says, well, she's not like Britney Spears. Like, Britney Spears really shows, like, what bipolar is. Which, like, first of all, news flash, Britney Spears is not the only person in the world who's ever exemplified different behaviors of bipolar disorder. It shows in tons of different ways. And then she also went on to critique the way that Selena brought up the diagnosis. I guess when Selena said it, she said, and I I came to the realization that I had bipolar disorder or used phrasing that wasn't, and then my doctors diagnosed me with that. She used a different kind of phrasing. And Shallon thinks she has cracked the goddamn case. She has cracked the code. Selena Gomez is a liar and she's lying about having bipolar disorder. She just self-diagnosed herself because Selena Gomez isn't a millionaire who can very easily afford actual <laughs> mental health care. She's really going to sit there and pretend and not take into consideration the fact that Selena Gomez was talking to hundreds of thousands of people and discussing a very deeply, and I'm not even, first of all, I'm not even like a Selena Gomez stan. Like I want to make that very clear, but I cannot imagine being a celebrity and having hundreds of thousands of people hear me publicly on a live stream discuss my time in a mental hospital and having bipolar disorder. Because no matter what, there's going to be people like Shallon who are going to be assholes about that. So of course she was nervous and she used wording that was appropriate for how she wanted to use it. Micromanaging the way that she announces this and micromanaging the way she talks about it is peak not giving a shit about mental health. And the best part about this video, the best part about this video, because Shallon doesn't edit her videos. She sits down and she talks for 40 minutes and then she turns off the camera and then she uploads it. There's zero edits that happen in these videos. So I'm watching and all of a sudden I was like doing the dishes while I was watching and all of a sudden it like 
got quiet but then it stayed quiet for like a minute and I was like wait why is it what happened like did my iPad stop working so I went to go look at my iPad and I look and she's researching <laughs> She goes, let's talk about bipolar disorder. Let's talk about the symptoms. And she spends three minutes in the video that she did not cut out researching very quickly on Google what bipolar disorder is. And then it, what's so scary about this, if she hadn't have cut this, she would have never known this is what happened. But what's so scary about this is it's apparent that she read what bipolar disorder was off of the basic, like, gen she didn't even click on a link probably, it was the generic, what is bipolar disorder? What are the different types of bipolar disorders? She very clearly saw the bullet points for what the symptoms were for each kind of bipolar disorder and then just said them as if she's known them her entire life and was using the iPad as reference when she very clearly was doing the research for the video during taping the video and only spent like two minutes doing it can you imagine can you imagine if I was talking about like I don't even know honestly if I was talking about something and I was like hold on just one second guys and there was a three minute clip of me researching very briefly the very serious and heavy topic I was about to talk about I can't imagine I would be horrified if that was me I can't imagine how you could post that and not be utterly embarrassed at what you did there's also other like little examples sprinkled in here like she did a video about Kris Jenner and allegedly had this like diary of that Robert Kardashian kept that had these medical notes of like a Kris Jenner therapy session from like the 80s and she calls having a die a man having a diary soft and sad she uses these like very clickbaity titles to make her video seem like they're going to be very pro mental health and very helpful but in reality the rhetoric that she shares about mental health is actually very anti mental health especially the, anti the mental health movement of being more open and destigmatizing she's very anti that constantly shits on celebrities who share their experiences she continues to speak on addiction and people who struggle with addiction specifically the ones I saw were Pete Davidson Demi Selena she speaks on them when she has zero credentials or apparently life experience because she's brought no life experience to her knowing what that would be like. I would argue that her videos and her rhetoric behind her videos are going to make people less likely to share their stories because the undertones of her video are so anti-mental health. And here's the thing. <laughs> In her videos, her whole thing is, I'm gonna talk about these celebrity situations, but then I'm gonna use these situations to give you guys, the viewers, <laughs> advice, and help on what's going on in your life. We're gonna use these celebrities as examples, which find me a psychology textbook that uses celebrities or YouTubers or influencers as examples for mental health because they don't exist. <laughs> We use case studies that doctors have done evaluations of on people. We don't speculate on a YouTube video of an architectural digest interview that Kanye West and Kim Kardashian did. That's not how you figure out mental health things. I'm literally like a week away from getting my bachelor's degree in social work, which is very heavily focused on like this type of stuff, like, uh, uh, you know, looking at case studies and figuring things out like this. And it's just so incredibly harm. It's like, it makes me like, viscerally angry when I see people spreading this message that is so anti-mental health. It, it literally nothing makes me more angry because you can claim this is the same thing that Rewired Soul did is you can claim that what you are doing is for the greater good because even though you might be hurting the celebrities or YouTubers that you're talking about even though you might be hurting them it's for the greater good you're helping other people but that's not true that's not why she's putting these celebrities in her titles she's putting these celebrities in her titles because they get views <laughs> That is why. And she doesn't just want to be another star magazine or gossipy channel. She doesn't want to do that because people have been pivoting away towards that. People have been pivoting away from just, you know, trashy celebrity gossip. She uses these people and uses their name and then she can spew her half advice, which some of it is like, okay, like, yeah, that's advice I guess a person who's like been through a divorce would probably be able to give. And if her video was just like, here's how you can get out of a toxic relationship and she shared her experiences about her divorce and talked about, you know, how it affected her, that would be totally fine. But the second you bring up Adele and her husband and say her husband looks like he has a small penis because he has a beard, <laughs> the second you do that and then also try to spin it as you being this advice giver and this person who advocates for mental health, you're a liar. You cannot use real life people other than yourself as an example for things like this. You can't 
pull other people down to raise other people up. And here's the thing, I would have like zero problem with this girl if all she did was just talk about celebrity drama. Go for, like that's, we all do. I talk about YouTuber drama, that's my thing. I enjoy talking about it. I love talking about people who are problematic. I do try not to speculate because I think speculating is kind of weird but like a lot of other youtubers speculate on things it's human nature to speculate whatever say bitchy things about selena gomez like whatever do what you want to do but the second you start bringing things like mental health addiction trying to be this like person advice giver which by the way oh <laughs> by the way she has a website where you can pay 40 doll hairs to ask her a question and she'll answer it for you you can pay shallon for advice. You can also pay $20 and she'll look at your Instagram and tell you what's wrong with it. Something about that just feels illegal, but I know it's not. Like, I know it's not illegal to, like, pay for advice, but something about that, something about a transaction happening makes it seem like she really thinks she is that legitimate that her advice is worth $40 from other people. And the fact that she's probably getting it, because she has a lot of really, really diehard supporters. And that's kind of what I want to get into here. Why does she keep growing? Why is she profitable? Spring on this platform. She has 350,000 subscribers. Like, she has a lot of subs. She has a lot of people that really like her. Her views are really good. I think a lot of that is because she uses celebrities, but like, okay, we all know that that gets the views. Like, whatever. I think the real reason that she has gone unchecked for so long and why she has been able to make videos with such a harmful message surrounding mental health for so long without anyone really calling her out before this is because, I, and like, again, I hate to keep referencing the rewired soul because I just don't don't want to talk about him again um but I will say it's a good example where he got really called out because he was talking about youtubers I think the reason she's gone unchecked for so long and the reason she has so many fans and the reason people don't see a problem with what she's saying about these celebrities is because they're celebrities I think with youtubers who you're watching you're watching me right now this is me I'm not playing a character am I like a little bit more bubbly on camera sure but like it's me this is me the youtubers you watch are you they're they're themselves <laughs> you're watching a person you're not watching a character you're not watching whatever like you're watching that person because they are who they are with celebrities really the most times that we see them I mean there's interviews with them and they do press and stuff like that but for the most part a lot of celebrities are very private people we don't know a ton about them as human beings really and what we do know is very controlled and is very you know it's it's a lot of publicists and a lot of managers and it's a lot of people controlling narratives so we don't actually really know a lot of them super well so i think in a way people feel more comfortable listening to and talking about celebrities you know having people speculate on them and speculate on their mental health and speculate on their drug use i think people feel more comfortable hearing that about celebrities because to them they're not people they're celebrities <laughs> they're we don't even really know who they are like this could be completely true what this woman is saying because i don't know who pete davidson is and he could totally be doing all of these things the kind of closing point to this is it's not prob the reality is selena gomez is probably never going to see this person's video and if she did it would definitely be harmful to her because what she was saying was harmful and cruel things however what's more harmful and more cruel the things that she's talking about are things that everybody goes through <laughs> a lot of people struggle with addiction a lot of people struggle with chronic illnesses which is she also shit on with selena gomez a lot of people struggle with bipolar disorder with mental health with understanding what's going on with them despite the fact that she claims she wants to just help people and give advice there are going to be people that watch that video that identify if I was Selena Gomez and are hurt by what she's saying and at the end of the day using I cannot stress this enough using real people that you do not know and have not done like a psychological evaluation on if you're qualified to do so using those people as examples is harmful and it's not okay and after d'angelo's video i saw her most recent video i was watching it and the comments were all i don't know who this person is saying that you're bad but they just don't understand you like they don't get you whatever and i think the thing about this is the people who really really love shallon and have followed her for like a long time and have really loved her content i don't think they want 
to admit that the person they've been taking advice from and the person that they have been following does and says things that are incredibly problematic. I don't think they want to admit that. And frankly, like, I can't blame you. I can't blame you for not wanting to see that what this person is doing is harmful. I can't blame you for those things. I hope that if you are a Shallon, like, stan or fan and you watch this video, that you at least try to view her videos in a way that is a little bit more, not even necessarily critical, but just like, if she says something that because she does in every video. If she does, just say, hey, what you said, that was kind of You don't have to just blindly support everything she says. If you're disagreeing with one or two things, let her know. Because after D'Angelo's video, her most recent video about Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato, there's already a very clear change in what she's doing. She focused way less on the actual situation with Selena and Demi, and the bulk of the video was talking about her experiences and her life, which if that's what she wants to do, that's fine. <laughs> like, I, I would encourage people to do that. I still wish, because she has such a large following, that she would think more critically about the words she's saying before she says them to make sure she's not coming across as anti mental health but like if that's what she wants to do fine if she wants to be a gossip thing and just talk about celebrity drama and just do all of that fine but don't go through a checklist pretending that you know that Ellen DeGeneres is a psychopath because she checked all the boxes on this random list that isn't even applicable anymore in the world of mental health you can't do it <laughs> I guess you can, but like, please stop. It's very frustrating, I would say. Um, that's it for me though, guys. This video was a lot. I did a lot of research. I had a lot of notes. Um, and I hope you guys liked it, enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you guys think about this whole situation down below. I guess my takeaway, if we're looking at a bigger picture here, is just because one person says some things that are kind of crappy, don't let it deter you from speaking out <laughs> about your mental health. Her big thing was when Pete Davidson or like Selena would talk about their mental health, she'd be like, well, nobody asked. Nobody asked you. No, I don't recall anybody asking you <laughs> if you were self-harming. Um, people don't have to ask you. You are totally able to just say it. Nobody who has empathy is going to sit there and say, well, I didn't ask you if you were self -harming. Nobody's going to do that. Please don't let just a small person percentage of people who are have a very anti-mental health rhetoric deter you from sharing your stories or talking to people or opening up to people if you are struggling. I always leave mental health links in my description. Please utilize them if you need to. There are people who want to help you and can help you, especially during a freaking pandemic. Um, so that is my biggest takeaway from this is like, please don't let a small minority of people deter you from seeking help if you need it or feeling like there's a stigma around you because you struggle with mental health because I promise you there's not. So that's it for me. <laughs> I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're here watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media, and everything I am wearing on my face will be linked down below along with a link to register to vote. That's right. You can click on that link. You can register to vote and you can be part of your democracy. It's like a super fun thing to do. And if you're not in the United States and that link does not apply to you, please make sure you're staying informed on what's going on in your part of the world and your country. Just use your voice in a positive way if you can because the world absolutely needs more of that and also stay six feet apart social distance if you can wash your hands and take care of each other because we all need to be taken care of right now um i love you guys so much and i will see you in the next one bye